Hello peeps, Drogat here, bringing you another StarMate video. Just recently, StarMate Doc has introduced categories for their uploads, and one of the categories is turrets. In this video, I would like to show off my compilation of the turrets I use, along with some design decisions why they were built as they were built. came to my attention that even though I made lots of tutorials, I never actually explained how the StarMate game mechanics work and how, from an engineering standpoint, my design decisions got influenced by that. For the course of this video, I'd like to start with smaller stuff and then get into the bigger things, just because we'll learn stuff along the way. So first thing we start with is an AMS turret. I use it also often as a anti-personal turret. Two things to note here. First thing would be in order to shoot down missile, a AMS turret has to be utilizing cannons as their primary guns because beams would always hit, but the developers decided that because of that beams are not able to harm the missiles like shoot them down so you have to use cannons otherwise the missiles won't get taken out next thing you want to make sure is that your cannons are rapid firing you want to have a cannon cannon master slave system installed making sure that you have lots of chances to actually hit the incoming missiles. This piece is a kind of a design piece. I wanted it to be um, symmetrical. Nice firing. I even managed to put in a light, a black light, to give it the color of its shots. You can't see it right now because of the background. There we go. Like this purpley, you know, color. That's basically black light. Also, another thing you could learn here is that turrets should be self-sufficient, meaning they should provide themselves with the required power to shoot. As you can see, this turret is not entirely self-sufficient because as long as it is firing, it basically requires more energy than it produces. Point here is that normally turrets do not fire all the time because the enemy ships basically uh, fire volleys of missiles. Those are going to get taken out and then they have to reload. So between those volleys, well, the turret just recharges and goes from there. On the other hand, if it really should be battling all the time and basically make itself really useful, it wouldn't soak too much power out of the hosting ship. I'm also using a second type of AMS turret, this one, which I have to give credit to Nuclear Fun for kind of inventing those. These are special in a way that they have an increased firing rate. Like, yeah, of course they are um, rapid fire, but as you can see, it seems like they are firing even double the normal rapid fire rate. This is because this turret not only has cannon barrels here in the front, it also has cannon barrels like two blocks back, which basically seems to double the firing rate, making it really efficient when it comes to taking out swarms of missiles. So those turrets I put on bigger ships. All right, so the next turret I have in stock for you guys is, well, a first turret that actually deals damage. The last turret that can be directly mounted on the ship's hull without, you know, having to sink its systems into uh, the ship. Um, it is kind of a beauty because it has so many nice attributes um, combining in a single turret that yeah, well, let's start with its damage stuff. That is not too complicated. It's a rapid firing turret with a punch through effect. You see here the secondary effect is not at 100%. I have slowed down the reload time to 416 milliseconds in order to increase the damage per shot. This is important because a higher damage per shot also increases the penetration block stepped. And we want this turret as soon as it is able to hit the target and hitting systems, remove as much systems as possible. 
So it's not our thing to keep it firing constantly on hull and just poking needles at the other ship. It actually should really, you know, burst through hull and then also kill blocks behind it. What we can see is that each shot this turret does requires 3750 energy. It does this two and a half times per second. The nice thing about this turret being its self-sufficiency and we see here turret body basically produces 9000 energy per second. That is a bit more than the shots that go off because it also has to sustain and when shot being able to reload the turret shields. So these numbers already show why it is important the turrets are self-sufficient. Just imagine you would have to keep track of how much power each turret requires to operate. Let's say you would use 10 of those and put them on a new ship and the new ship would then produce 90k power on top of its actual use just to keep those turrets operating. The bigger the ships get, the more you run into a disaster sooner or later. So, entirely self-sufficient, can be placed directly on hull, like nothing below here is able to, you know, deal a little bit of damage. Uh, that's good against fighters and such, so I pretty much use those also for its aesthetics pretty often. I would like to cover a bit more the topic of efficiency. So efficiency in Starmate, I would basically describe as an entity's ability to inflict and tank damage compared to this entity's mass. It's kind of the concept of how powerful something is. And powerful comes from, well, it's not exactly only power blocks, but it's systems. Because systems like guns combined with power are able to shoot, meaning inflict damage. Power and shield blocks and shield regeneration, meaning tanking damage. So how good a ship is kind of depends on these abilities compared to the ship's weight. So why mass? Think about it this way. Let's say you have two ships both equally powerful, but one weighs double the mass of the other. Then the smaller ship is also way more cost effective in resources than the bigger one. Or in other words, it's better. What does not contribute to a powerful entity? Decoration. And with decoration, I'm also talking about hull, standard armor, advanced armor. Of course, all the decoration blocks, yada, yada, yada. Everything that you just build to please the eye. I'm just saying, from a mere PvP standpoint, you should not waste time on trying to build something pretty. For me personally, it's important because I'm still seeking the challenge of building something pretty and effective. Pretty ships that still are able to properly PvP. Now this entire efficiency topic is also related to the idea of going big. And a lot of people don't seem to grasp what the actual change is, like what makes bigger ships more effective. I have tried to simplify this a little bit. So let's say you're building really, really small. So you have a system block which then is surrounded by eight hull blocks. Ratio one to eight, right? This is pretty awful, right? Let's say you're going a bit bigger, three by three. So you have nine system blocks and then you need 16 hull blocks to cover it, okay? This is eight more system blocks, but also eight more hull blocks but already we have a ratio of 9 to 16. Way better, right? Okay, let's make another jump by factor 2. So we go 5 by 5. Same principle. These are 25 to 24. Bam! You just crossed the line, okay? So the idea of going big is not only uh, just building things bigger, but also to shift the ratio of system blocks to hull blocks in your favor. So because you want more system blocks to build more powerful entities um, covered by as few hull blocks as possible, while still trying to make them look good, right? Another aspect here is Let's say you would use more hull, right? 
let's quickly check like this entity structures. It has a single thrust system here, one, right? This single thrust system provides 5.5 thrust. So a one-to-one -one thrust to mesh ratio would mean that we could use as this hull block basically only has 0 0.05 mass, we could transport 110 of those hull blocks with a single thruster block. If we would use instead advanced armor, which is five times the weight of the hull block, we could just transport 22 uh, advanced armor blocks. We can cover way more systems with 110 blocks than with just 22 blocks. So if we are making different choices, then we are pretty much forcing us to use more thruster to move the entire thing around. Those more thrusters also require more energy, so more power generation. And all the space those thruster modules and those additional power generation modules occupy, we cannot use for offensive or defensive systems. The entire point of hull around something is really making it pretty and do not go overboard with it. Use it very, very cleverly in order to be competitive. All right, so the next turret in our line is the only missile turret I still use. So let's quickly explain what's going on with this one. You can see missile computer 100% secondary beam because we want the missiles to travel very, very quickly and rapidly not only to catch very small and agile targets, but also to reduce the likelihood of AMS turrets being able to take our missiles down. I figured that it's more probable to hit a target with multiple smaller missiles than trying to shoot one bigger missile on an entity that actually is able to defend itself. Which is why I did not try to build bigger uh, missile turrets. As you could see or could have seen, that's 145,800 damage. This thing blows a decent sized hole into something that is unshielded, but you know, also doing quick work of fighters. Well, I'm just saying decent because it's not enormous. It just, you know, takes out a few systems and that's it. Well, it does it more effectively than the cannon turrets. Yeah. So they are cool for sustained damage, yada, yada, yada. The cool thing about this missile turret is though that Let's look in here. You see that the AI is pointing forward. So this is forward here, right? While the missile is getting launched upwards. It is getting launched upwards because the computer points upwards, right? So the backside is up. So it's looking down at us. So that doesn't may influence it by any means, but that thing is influencing it. What you do not want to happen is this thing firing at the turret body. To prevent this, this turret is not able to actually move further downwards or further upwards than these angles. So you see the um, opening for the missile always points kind of in the upper hemisphere of the turret body, right? This is made by having this block collide with these two blocks, like collide here in that position and collide on the other side in that position. So yeah, sometimes you need to, you know, just think about what could cause problems and then prevent it by, you know, using such techniques to make sure that the AI is not firing at ourselves and uh, all will be good, right? 
Now this is the first turret that basically has the turret's body system sunk into the carrying entity, right? If you still wonder why that is, the same reason discussed over here. Because we want to lower the amount of covering blocks compared to system blocks. So um, the turret point here is pretty low. This is always in the ship, so that won't get kicked out anytime soon. Yada, yada, yada. And up here, we just have this, these few, you know, hull blocks covering basically everything that is below here. Another question that comes up pretty frequently is why the turrets are shielded or why they have their own shields. Think of it this way. The position the turret is, the area the turret covers, even may it be small, the turret acts as shielding for the ship. Now the thing is, if such a turret being self-sufficient, meaning creating its own shields, and recovering its own shields. Getting hit by a shot, even though the shot is stronger than the turret, means that, for example, in this case, the turret would absorb its 11,582 shield first, before the actual ship would have to deal with any additional damage coming from the shot. Pretty nice concept, I think, which is why even the smallest turret, that one, should at least have this block. Because this block not only provides some shield regeneration, it also provides the initial 220 shield. Now, if you get 10k damage, minus 220 damage, you know, it all sums up. So the fewer damage the ship has to handle, the higher your survivability. Okay, let's get into the next turret. This is the last of my 360 degree on both axes turrets. Kind of the big brother of the um, small damage turret up, up there before. Let's check it out what's up here. So the first interesting thing to note is its mass. That's 52.7. So that is 2.7 mass over what a turret axis block actually provides as a maximum without any rail mass enhancers. The turret body has a single rail mass enhancer block, but you know, that's kind of the goal, basically exploiting this free mass that is provided to the maximum. Since the turret is a little bit bigger, I made a different choice in weapon combination here. Um, this turret has a Reload time of two seconds, uh, slightly faster cannon speed, higher range, of course, and it does lots of damage because of the long reload time. This lots of damage results in a very high depth of penetration. You can see all the numbers here. And we also added, you know, explosive to it quite a lot, meaning it's one of those long range sniping turrets which pretty much make a lot of blocks in the enemy ship go boom. Now the funny thing with explosive is the following. When explosive hits and the shot is strong enough, it really has to, like there really has to be a big burst behind it. It, for example, hits this block, right? Then the explosive effect triggers and removes all adjacent blocks. That one that one, that one, that one, and that one. So now, as you can see, we are already two blocks in, right? Now, if the next step of penetration is also things still strong enough, it will remove that block, and again, the adjacent ones, that one, that one, that one. I'm not going to remove all these, but this is basically the pattern, right? Each of the higher burst damage numbers in the list of depths of penetration, everything that has a high enough number will remove six blocks instead of just one. See that? If the amount is not high enough, those next to the blocks will just get damaged, like such. And then also this here behind will also just get damaged. So it will um, knock against this one and then basically repeat the pattern here. So then it comes to a pretty quick halt. 
these first rounds here, they are penetrating really, really deep into the enemy ship. And this also gives you the opportunity to actually hit some of those auxiliary things, which they just recently added, which would of course be awesome because then they are starting to explode and stuff like that. Okay, let's get to the next one. This here is the turrets of a scimitar. It's a destroyer. And this of course is an art turret. I mean, it is still pretty effective, but you can clearly see all these uh, wedging and stuff like that. Oh, there's a block missing. Why is there a block missing? That's not so nice. Oh, because I placed the camera blocks there. Uh, I need to fix that somewhere. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, art piece, kind of. If you don't know the scimitar, check it out. But here you already see... Um, down below we need lots and lots and lots of energy to power all those rail enhancer rail mass enhancer blocks because this thing up there weighs 900 something mass so the turret body pretty much the biggest job it has is up keeping um, those turret enhancer blocks to keep the big turret up there moving all right yeah stylish last but not least um this is the apophis this is a turret made for capital ships um the crooks here or the the catch here is trying to basically build the biggest turret possible and you are wondering well what is hindering you actually the ai is because the ai um might not know how to utilize um auxiliary energy so what is actually keeping us low is we need to be able to produce the energy for the shot um, entirely in the turret. Because we, of course, such a thing, you definitely want to be self-sufficient because if not, this thing is going to soak 7 million power out of your ship with each shot. And that happens every four seconds. So you might already guess what weapon systems are in there. So cannon computer, um, beam nearly 100%, explosive 100%. Um, yeah, this, yeah, goes deeper than 100 blocks into the enemy ship and killing stuff in there. Probably even the last shot. I, I'm not pretty sure. That's 711,730 damage each shot and it fires nearly every four seconds, requiring seven million energy. This means that our turret body has to produce those seven million um, energy, and it does. It has, you see, power. It has eight million storage nearly, and it produces 1.9 million each second, times four second, meaning close to nine million, because it also, of course, has to, you know, take care of its shields and everything. Yeah, this is basically the biggest you might experience on any ship, just because of this power restriction that you would have to give the turret body a separate AI, which then is only responsible for triggering the um, auxiliary energy and uh, probably those two AIs won't even, you know, understand each other. So yeah, that's it. Uh, I hope you guys learned a lot about um, the sinking process when building turret. I hope you guys learned a lot about um, mechanics. I'm going to release those turrets one after the other soonish. I will put the link to my... I have a thread on Starmate Doc where I'm listing all the uh, ship and stuff releases. So I'll link this thread. Um, I'm not going to release all the turrets right away because I need to do the graphics and stuff like that. And so, yeah, maybe over the course over the next few weeks. In general, if you have questions, leave them please in the comments. 
And now I would really um, appreciate if you would leave me a like if you enjoyed this video or if you found it helpful, also share it with your friends. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.